the world. They learn how to understand their identity in the world. They learn how to be interdependent. They learn how to cope. And so if we take the trauma literature and we take it at face value and we say that the process that children go through to get to the place that they get is a learned behavior, then can we operate a system? Can we create a narrative that says that the role of this system is to in fact create an alternative learned behavior that is good for them and good for the society? Your numbers, your figures, your facts were haunting. You know, when I do Wednesday's Child as a news anchor, I get to see just a little kid who laughs and smiles and jumps around and plays and has hope and dreams. And your numbers remind me of the true story with our children, the reality and the background, and what our families will encounter when they do adopt and foster. So thank you for the reality and a reminder that we all have a lot of work to do out there because we know, unfortunately, there is another child coming along the way that we need to be of service to. And you know, in our capacity, in our professional capacity, we're, we in the child welfare field are in a unique position uh, in both the private and public sectors to see the overwhelmingly oppressive force of these societal factors. Uh, and with our historic role and vast experience of being the voice for our most vulnerable children and families, I'm convinced that we can and must do something about it. When we have these kids in care, before we end up paying for them being homeless or incarcerated, we need to start thinking about what we do here in, with You Gotta Believe is where we hire mentors that go out and, and form relationships with foster children and try to find out who these kids know. Because by the time they're in care at the ages 14 to 17, they already have life, they already made a lot of connections, and if we actually spend the time trying to figure out who their connections are, we'd be able to hopefully find someone who could adopt them. So instead of thinking about interdependent, independent living, we should really start thinking about interdependent living and thinking that these kids are adoptable. The past is important because it gets us to this place where all those traditional media forms so bent on this idea of objectivity. Um, which is important, truth is important, it's a virtuous thing, but it's also important to be able to impel the reform you want to impel by telling truth in a way that compels people to move. So now that we've got this blogosphere and the ex explosion of what they call uh, new traditionals, which are media outlets subsidized by philanthropies, so what you see now is a new opportunity to really drive home change for these kids, and it's serious stuff. When I go out with emergency response workers in LA County, and, I, and I'm sitting there in the area where they take the kids, and I see a three-month-old baby whose older brother was just beaten to death, and this little kid doesn't know anything about this. I can't be there writing a story just based on the facts. I don't need to be writing a story that will impel the solution to this larger societal problem. And so what I'm saying to you is that I'm seeing that this army is growing. You guys have the solutions and the new media landscape that we have walked into allows us to create incredible reform. And many of you are not using and leveraging grant makers as thought partners with you in your work. Most of you see the foundation folks that work in your communities and some of the national level funders, one of whom you'll hear from in just a few minutes, just as deep pockets and as resources to support your work. But they can also be very important thought partners with you. Think about it. They receive hundreds, in some instances, thousands of grant applications with people putting forth their best thinking about how to address child welfare and related issues. And if you have an opportunity to chat with some folks and listen and learn from them about some of the things that they're hearing, you might be surprised at what kind of um, ideas, partnerships, collaborations grow from that as a pathway to getting funded. But the good news is that there is um, a growing attention on public-private partnerships within the field of philanthropy. It is here, it is now, and I would strongly encourage you to think about how to leverage this particular moment in time build public-private partnerships in your community. We are your partner in providing foster care. And we are looking at ourselves 
to see whether we are in fact structured in such a way, providing services in such a way, that our Board of Trustees' commitment to the goals of education, to the goals of mental health stability, the goals of meaningful employment, to the goals of transitioning to successful adulthood are being managed well. We've got to have a full array of services for the youth. Not no services, not a few services, but a full array of services delivered at the right time, in the right amount, and for the right duration. We've got to involve youth, families, and communities in the solutions, and they've got to be sustainable.